Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps Fan. Forgive me if this review is just rambly, insane, jumbled nonsense. I'm very tired. I decided to possibly make this review later, but I decided I wanted to go ahead and get it out tonight because I haven't had a video for you guys for a few days now. But uh, this might be a little bit scattered as a mental review of a TV book adaptation of the TV episode from the old classic Goosebumps show, which is also an adaptation of the old 90s book series, particular book, Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes from Goosebumps, R.L. Stein. Yeah, this is TV book number 18. It was the last of the series to ever come out for the TV books. Of course, to reiterate, these are not whatsoever the original novel with a new cover. These are actual adaptations, straight-up adaptations, novelizations, about 60 pages long, of episodes of the TV show. They're not the same thing as the original books. So these are worth picking up if you're a collector in my opinion. Originally, I wasn't going to pick them up, but I found that out, and then I picked all of them up. So I've had them for a while now. I've been trying to read through them when I see the episodes. And I read this one this time around. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know at this current point when you're watching this video, uh, about a week or two ago, I read the original book of Revenge of the Law and Gnomes, and I fell in love with it. It was so great. Such a great, great surprise. And then I saw the TV episode for the first time. I had never seen it before as much as I've grown up on Goosebumps, and I loved it. It was so good. This is an adaptation of that TV episode, and it was really, really good, too. Um, of course, right now, I'm also in the middle of my Lawn Gnomes review series. I'm also going to do a ranking video. This will be included in that ranking video. It might not seem like it should be. There's really technically only two Lawn Gnome books, but uh, really there's four, from what I could tell, as long as I'm not completely wrong here. But I really like the TV books. This is possibly my favorite compared to Attack of the Mutant. And I think there was three that I've read. I think it was Monster Blood, Night of the Living Dummy 2. Uh, <laughs> this one and Attack of the Mutant. This might be my favorite easily at this current point. There are some others I'm curious about reading at some point that might end up being my favorites. I don't know. But at this current point, this is probably my personal favorite. Either this or Attack of the Mutant. They're fantastic. Really, really good. Um, I think that the best place to start with this is the kind of semi-changes between the original book and this particular adaptation book. It's such a hard review to make because you have to constantly keep using the word adaptation for everything to make your clarity clear. Uh, so essentially the basic story of this is that you have a boy and his sister, the sister is an older sister, and they have a next door neighbor that's very mean. His name is Mr. McCall. He's very military man focused. Uh, he is a ex-military type guy, wears camo pants and stuff like that. Very mean man. It's not like in the original book where you have Mr. McCall and the dad of the two kids that are the main characters being kind of best buddies, sort of kind of, but he's also mean to the kids at the same time. It's not the same thing with the episode and with this TV adaptation of the episode, or book adaptation of the TV episode, because they're not whatsoever. It's like Mr. McCall hates the dad's guts and the kid's guts. So it's a little bit different in that respect. Of course, this is spoiler free, so I won't get into too much for you. But essentially, the dad comes home one day and he buys two brand new lawn gnomes to put on his yard. Because they're all kind of having this like neighborhood lawn competition about who has the best looking yard, the best decorations, all that stuff. And the dad is obsessed with decorations. Just lawn gnomes. He only bought these lawn gnomes for the first time. But he has other things like deer statues and mushroom statues and stuff like that. Very wild, crazy looking stuff. And uh, essentially, he bought these two lawn gnomes to add to the collection. And they're pretty ugly. Uh, they're called Hap and Chip. One because he looks happy. One because he has a chip in his tooth. I don't remember if the book, like this novelization or the episode even said the names of the gnomes. I think they're just lawn gnomes in the episodes. But in the original book, that's what they're called, just in case you don't know that. In case I am wrong, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, Chip and Hap. And these two lawn gnomes are really cool. I love the episode for the show because it looks very colorful. Really adds a lot to that as a Goosebumps episode for me because it's also a 1990s show. So all the coloring is fantastic because the 90s were a very colorful time. Uh, we had a lot of cool colors on TV shows and cartoons and stuff. It was a great time to be alive and be a kid at that age, too. But anyway, uh, this book does a really good job, I think, of being faithful to the original script, the original episode of the show. I think it works tremendously well. It's also not written by R.L. Stein, by the way. Like I said, not, pretty much none of these TV books were written by R.L. Stein. He was doing so many things like Fear Street and this and so many other things at the same time. This was actually adapted from the teleplay by Charles Laser, uh, adapted... This actual book is written by Teddy Margulies. I don't know how to pronounce that name. But anyway, it's not written by R.L. Stein. And there's also eight color pages of stuff from the show here. 
And you have to be careful when you're reading this if you've never seen the episode before, because these pictures will spoil the end of this novelization and the end of the TV episode for you, because they have some stuff in there that's, uh, like, the last thing that happens in the book. I'm like, why would you do that to your readers? But they do. Now, essentially, once the dad brings home the two lawn gnomes, Chip and Hap, some bad things start happening in the neighborhood, specifically to uh, the next-door neighbor, Mr. McCall, who is the mean guy's house. He has, like, his plants get destroyed, his house gets vandalized and graffitied on and stuff like that. His whole backyard gets torn up. And the main character happens to witness a lot of this. He starts to wonder where the gnomes are going at nighttime, because they just, they're, they're not in their spots where they're supposed to be at night. So it opens, up, it opens up, excuse me, I can't talk because it's so late. I'm like brain dead right now. It opens up this whole door of, are the lawn gnomes possibly alive? And it becomes so much fun. It's such a fun, fantastic story that Stein came up with with that original novel. The TV episode was even better in some respects. It was such a great, fun time. And this adaptation is extremely faithful to that TV episode. So if you love the episode, you'll probably love this as well. And I loved all of it. So far, I love the Lawn Gnome stuff. Again, I have read at one point Planet of the Lawn Gnomes for the Most Wanted series. It was the first book of that series a long time ago, like in, like, maybe 2013. It was a long time ago. It was a long, long time ago when I read that book. I didn't like it back then, but you never know. I might like it this time around. This is the third book of the Lawn Gnomes books I'm talking about for my series ranking. <laughs> and uh, I had a hiccup, excuse me. It's almost like I ignored that almost for a second there, and then I was like, no, I need to bring attention to that. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed this episode, this book, this novelization. I think it works very well. It's nice that these TV books have the color photos and stuff inside of them. I really like that a lot. It's just a really cool thing to have from this show. I, I do like these little TV books as a collector, you know, because I collect the books on the DVDs and VHS tapes. That's about it. Maybe the board games, I'm going to start trying to pick those up, probably. Uh, but mainly these, because I really, really dig books. I dig some good books, and this one's pretty solid. I dig it for the most part. It's very well written from the adapter himself, Teddy. Uh, it feels like Arl Stein's writing style, and I like that a lot. The faithfulness to making it feel as personable as the way the TV show felt, the way the stories were told on the TV show, the way the books were written by Stein and his writing style. It just works immensely well, and I dig it a lot. There's not a whole lot to be said. One thing I am really sad about is when I read the back of the book and it says, Don't miss the next book in this series, TV book number 19, The Blob That Ate Everyone. It never got made. It was in production, and it never got released. I think they were also doing a Haunted Mask book, which why would you not make the Haunted Mask a TV book first? It was the first ever episode that came out of this show. Well, the first two episodes, because it's a two-parter, but still... Why would you not make that your TV book release, like the book number one? Why would you not do that? I, I don't know what they were thinking with that. It was just a stupid idea, just a plain out dumb idea to do it that way. But they did it that way, and the mistakes were made, and TV books did not last very long because of that. But even so, I really like the TV book series for the most part. They've made some really bad choices on what they have adapted, like My Hairiest Adventure. Why would you adapt that of all things? Why? But even so, <laughs> what are your thoughts on Goosebumps Presents TV book number 18, Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. I'd love to hear what you have to say down below. I recommend it if you want to pick it up for your collection or anything. It's very good. My copy also, by the way, has the cover end here on the corner. It looks weird for a reason. Apparently a person who owned this before, I'm assuming a child, maybe in the 90s for that matter, like cut the corner of the book off and then took a like an index card and put that there and like colored it to make it blend in sort of kind of with his yellow jacket. And, uh, it looks like garbage, but I'm glad to have a copy of the book because the book is running for like $200 and $300 nowadays on eBay and whatnot, so it was a cool little find just to grab one out of nowhere in a big bundle. I'm glad I have it. I'm glad I have my copy that I have. But anyway, if I had to rate this book on a five-star basis, I would give it a five out of five. I know that seems a little high, but for what it is as a 60-page adaptation of a TV episode that I love to death, it's really good. It, that silliness and that cheesiness and goofiness of the story of Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes Again, it's kind of like a little bit of a ripoff of Not a Living Dummy stuff with Slappy. Just a little bit, just a tiny bit, but I still love it. I still adore all of it. I love this whole inanimate object thing coming to life in the Goosebumps series. I just, I've always had this infatuation with Slappy. Just different things like that. The monster blood thing being sentient is always interesting. It doesn't talk or anything, but it crawls around. It goes after people and stuff. It always makes it more interesting to me rather than just having a big old beastie monster. I don't know, it, that's how I feel when it comes to Goosebumps and being a fan. But anyway, when it comes to TV book number 18, Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes, the very last TV book that was ever made, I give it a 5 out of 5. It's my personal favorite at the current point for the TV book series. 
But uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say about this book down below. Thank you for watching, guys. What did you think about it? Did you love this book? Did you love the original book more? Did you love the TV episode more than all of them? I'd love to hear all that down below as well. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below. <laughs> I've, as I've already said to you. I'm, I'm tired. Shut up. Anyway, may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you guys today, and goodbye.